regulation. So many connotations in one word. Some people dread this word. Some others don't even know what it all entails. But one thing is for sure. In the blockchain and cryptocurrency industry, regulation and the regulatory landscape could seem like a maze. Countries that are basically following the hype of the industry by announcing, oh, come here, you know, set your business here. But is there any clear regulatory, is there a clear regulatory path forward? Or is it also part of that hype? We all know who the Winklevoss brothers are. July 27th, 2018, their ETF is rejected by the SEC. For the second time they tried, rejected. Exchanges getting their bank accounts closed, taking their business elsewhere. Uncertainty on the tax and fiscal landscape. Will it be taxed as a capital gain? Will it not be taxed at all? Some countries differ on opinion. Reaching out to your favorite exchange, something happened, customer service, tech support gets back to you two weeks later, a week later, four days later. I see some people nodding. You've been there, done that. These are the challenges that basically the industry is facing. So what does it need? Obviously a clear regulatory landscape stable financial services, defined fiscal regulation, and a customer-centric approach, and not asset-centric approach. It's interesting that in this industry, it almost seems like the assets are more important than the customers. And as we are over and waking up from the craze of 2017 with the ICOs and the market skyrocketing, we're beginning to face reality on many different areas. So what are companies and enterprises doing nowadays? Well, they're trying to establish operations and let's go quote, quote unquote, stable democratic jurisdiction with clear policies to better regulate the activity. The question is, are there any? You know, it's ironic because we're in the most highly regulated country in the world, in the US. There's regulation for everything. We know for a fact there soon, be, will, there soon will be regulation for this industry. So do we go offshore? Are there any solutions here? For how much longer can we get by with the famous MSB license until businesses are cracked down on in the US. One thing is for sure, there doesn't seem to be clear regulation for this industry. I guess we can all agree with that. There is some sort of similarities. You can apply for something that has already been in place, but for industry specific regulation, there doesn't seem to be. Another big challenge to operate with the financial system to add value by allowing crypto assets to interact with fiat currencies in a KYC, AML, FATF compliant environment. G20 met this year in March in Buenos Aires, Argentina. This meeting that took place in March 20th in Buenos Aires had to do with cryptocurrencies. One of the deadlines was December of this year to come up with solutions and they tasked the Financial Action Task Force, there is a whole report on this, as to how cryptocurrencies can be regulated in their uh, jurisdictions. And of course, we all know that whatever the G20 does, the majority of the countries will follow suit. Now, other of the needs, are there any countries that are incentivizing from a fiscal standpoint, creating jobs, strengthening the economic system of that country. Malta seems to be one of those. 
but do, are there any fiscal incentives for companies? Because so far it, always, it only seems like it just come over, said shop. What now? I don't know. We'll figure it out together. And history, if history was to be our judge, we know that whenever there isn't any clear regulation and regulation and innovation sometimes, they don't seem to get along too well. How about refocus and industry dynamics with the customer at the center? Upholding best practices in the customer service, technical support, and quality assurance departments. Creating a new industry gold standard, basically. Because this industry is so new. It, there's so many needs, so many companies flourishing, coming up to the forefront, some others dying out. You know, in many interviews that we had earlier today, um, one of them being uh, CNBC earlier, they were asking me, what about the price? And like, you know, we've heard in this conference before, what about it? What the industry needs now is underlying real technology, proven businesses that can thrive in this industry and prove that the technology works and all of the challenges are being tackled head on. And the price will be a consequence of that. Not the other way around. The ICO craze of last year had to do precisely with that. Companies, people, you know, putting together a white paper saying, this is how we're going to revolutionize the industry. People believing in it, investing in it. Turns out, ah, it was just another great idea. Um, of course, regulators are calling that, and to some extent, I don't want to be too strong with my language, scams. Some regulators are calling that. Regulators cracking down on some ICOs. Is there a reason to regulate this industry? Evidence shows that if an industry is regulated, if we work with the regulators, there will be a stronger foundation for the technology to thrive. So regulation should be a word that we should all embrace and look forward to and cooperate with regulators towards this very same goal. Now, let's examine very quickly, navigating this maze is bringing us to Malta. There is a law that is passed in July of this year that says in November 1st, at a conference, how convenient, we're going to announce uh, the enactment of a regulation that will be cryptocurrency catered. But at the same time, we see companies banking on simple MOUs. There is a memorandum of understanding signed with a big exchange, and now it's all over the news. There will be a securities, security tokens exchange soon. Is there any regulation in place for that? You know, if there is any regulation in place for that, did we all know the Malta scored a 6 out of 10, 10 being the worst, by the way, by Standard & Poor, global ratings and allegations of money laundering? So we're fixing one thing. What about the other? You know, regulation has to be integral. Japan. There is a self-regulatory body in Japan called the Japan's Virtual Currency Exchange Association. And what they basically said is, regulate yourselves until something happens. How many scandals have come out of Japan in terms of security breaches with exchanges, assets being lost, people losing, you know, we all, if we go as far back as Mt. Gox, for example. What happened with the Bitcoin price right after that? What happened with the Bitcoin price right after the ETF was denied this year for the Winklevoss brothers? So does it seem to be, does this industry seem to be only based on speculation? The Japanese Financial Services Association now has to step in in Japan and create regulation from scratch. If you want to apply for an exchange license right now, it's impossible. US and Canada. The Virtual Commodity Association has emerged in response to uncertainty surrounding the industry that there isn't, or it has not been addressed by any government regulators. There is actually a, the North American Securities Administration Association that they launched an operation called Crypto Sweep earlier this year. And it's not focusing only on cases of fraud, but focusing on failing to properly register an investment product before offering it to investors. It sounds very ideal to put together a white paper and raise money on it. Does that premise even sound responsible? It could sound enticing if you want to raise some money quickly. Does the premise sound responsible? 
Are we being focused on the customer, consumer, investor here? What is the focus on being directed in this industry? And we noticed something very interesting in navigating the regulatory maze. Costa Rica, located in Central America, considers cryptocurrencies commodities and not securities. The equivalent of the Securities Exchange Commission in Costa Rica, called Sujeval, they basically came forth two years ago. It's unbelievable how this does not make the news. Two years ago and says, cryptocurrencies to us at least is not considered a security, is considered a commodity, and there is clear regulation for commodities. So if you want to do your ICO or whatever it may be, go and get regulated with the Commodities Exchange Commission. How many ICOs have come out of Costa Rica? Zero. Isn't that ironic? So are we avoiding regulation? Are we embracing regulation? Because now there is a chance that if you're putting together a, a business plan and you want to raise money on it, you can have your broker dealer license from the Costa Rican Commodities Exchange. And what is Costa Rica? Is it some shady country? With all due respect, like the historic uh, background of Malta, for example, with gaming and money laundering, not even close. On Standard & Poor, rated 2 out of 10, 10 being the worst. Interesting. You know, our company tokenized it, basically, what we have accomplished already. Not like a lot of crypto companies that they're you know, all forward looking and we're going to do this and we're going to do and we're going to do. You know, we're talking about what we've already done and accomplished. We established ourselves successfully in Costa Rica. We already have been granted a broker dealer license from the commodities exchange of the country. We acquired a currency exchange license for all G10 currencies, allowing us to separate crypto and fiat. Because the main issue with the uh, financial system is when you're mixing the asset classes and now you're going from Bitcoin to uh, uh, fiat and fiat currencies to Bitcoin in an exchange manner, there is no traceability. This is ir ironic. There's traceability in the transactions, but on anti-money laundering policies, and I know your client, who owned that Bitcoin before you? We know from what wallet it's been, but who was the owner? And this is what scares banks. And every time you're talking about a cryptocurrency, what do banks do? We all know. They close their accounts. They're de-risking. But if you're able to put crypto in a silo and fiat currencies in a the silo, then you're able to track all of the fiat currency transactions. And from a wallet point of view, all of the different transactions that have taken place in the blockchain. We've separated the silos. We've acquired an 11-year-old company in Costa Rica uh, that has a currency exchange license. And what's interesting, and this is unbelievable, it really is, but it's true. Costa Rica incentivizes technology companies and places them on an international free zone, giving you a 10-year tax exemption. All the four points we've talked about, the fiscal uncertainty, Costa Rica already tells you flat out, you're a technology company, you come to the country, 10-year tax exemption. Flat out. Don't worry about capital gains or not capital gains. What am I paying in taxes here? You have an incentive. Just bring jobs to the country. Number two, you can already obtain a broker-dealer license from the commodities exchange. Number three, you can operate with currency, existing currency exchanges to separate crypto and fiat to abide by anti-money laundering regulations set forth by the G20 and the FATF already in place. This is incredible. And then on top of that, Costa Rica is extremely well known for the uh, BPO services industries, Amazon, Intel, HP, Procter & Gamble. All those companies, when you're calling all, all those companies for customer service, the person answering the phone is a Costa Rican. Costa Rica has a large, long history of services. And what tokenize it now can bring forth to the industry is all of those solutions for third parties. Do you want to set shop in Costa Rica? We're going to help you do it the right way. We tokenize it. We help you uh, be regulated, have a, a broker-dealer license, have a bank account, sub-account with our currency exchange, set up, be set up in an international free trade zone, tax exempt for 10 years. And actually, a publicly traded company that set, opened up a branch in Costa Rica um, 
is one of our clients and one of our examples. Their name is Weiss Network. They're basically an analog mixed signal system on a chip company uh, that is mixing Internet of Things, blockchain, and artificial intelligence all in one. It's actually a very cool company. Um, very complex. That's actually not my alley. But what's interesting about these guys is they wanted to do it right. Obviously, they're you know a branch of a publicly traded company. So they have to think about all of these things, which is, I think, the mindset that a lot of us in this industry need to have. Um, their technology is already proven. They have a search engine that is all AI based. The name is avant-ai.com. And the cool thing about these guys is they've thought about the most important, which is, hey, let's first and foremost, if we're going to be touching blockchain, think, disregard ICOs, disregard raising money, just blockchain alone. Why don't we seek for a, a clear regulatory framework? And so they did. So the final message is, is it possible to navigate this maze? If you search, you will find. And at least at this conference, we're being able to tell you guys, look us up, you know, tokenizeit.cr. Um, if you are serious about being fully regulated, fully compliant, we've already done it. We're not in the process of doing it. We've done it. And we've already done it for others. So there it is, a solution. I'm hoping that you would have appreciated um, the information, and I look forward to connecting with some of you. Thank you very much.